Happy birthday, Sanibel Library. Sanibel Public Library commemorates its 30th birthday this month. Today, Wednesday, April the 18th, 1992, we are celebrating the 30th birthday of the Sanibel Public Library by having an open house all day from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. There will be a construction update meeting about the progress of the new library at 3 p.m. 30 years ago, a group of energetic, public-spirited individuals founded the Sanibel Island Free Public Library. Mr. Gerald Martin, Reverend Thaddeus Allen, Miss Pauline Wilson, Mrs. Richard Fuller, Mrs. Herbert Lewis, and Mr. Art Swanson. Housed in a small room at the Com Sanibel Community Association building, 150 volumes welcomed our inaugural patrons. Donations of books and increased patronage made moving to larger quarters necessary in 1965 and 1967. This photograph shows moving day 1965. The donation of land in 1970 provided the incentive to begin planning for a permanent facility at the present location. Funds were obtained through creative fundraising, memberships, and other donations. And in October of 1973, the completed building was open to the public. Population growth and increased library patronage resulted in additions being built in 1978 and in 1974, 84, which has served us well to the present. As we begin to record and observe the 30th birthday, you'll see many familiar faces and some new ones. First, we will peek in on the preschool story hour as the children sing happy birthday to the library. A library kid and a young library patron. I couldn't get 30 candles. Gosh, that'd be too big for cake. I would eat all six. All right. Let's okay, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear library. Happy birthday to you. I want you to all make a wish for the library. Okay. Close your eyes and make a wish for the library. Would you help me blow out the candles? Easy. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Oh, oh. Now, would you like to buy the, the library birthday cake? Yes. This one, please. Thank you. Oh, we're having a birthday party at the Thank 
learning? Yeah. Well, how old are you? Five? I'm four. I'm four. Five? I'm four. I'm four. Do, you know how old, do you know how old the library is today? Thirty years old. Oh, I bet some of your parents. Gosh, I bet some of your parents are thirty years old. Yeah, thirty-one. <laughs> well, let's put it in the newspaper. <laughs> so way back in 1962, some volunteers, some people who love to read and love books, started the library. And now it's 1992, and that's 30 years. And so we're having a birthday party today for the library. And so we're going to have a pretend birthday party in here. How many of you have ever had a birthday party? Mm -hmm. What are some good things, Brett, that happened at your birthday party? Did you have anything good to eat? Yes, Megan, did you have anything? I had cake. I had, I had, um, I didn't like my cake because I had dog cake. I wanted a mini mo. I wanted a mini because I asked my mom to give me a mini mo. And I had a cake. I had a cake. Well, that's nice. I remember my son, who's coming to visit today, when he was three years old, he wanted a doggy cake. And he, sure enough, you got a doggy cake. Mm -hmm. And when you have birthday parties, don't you usually have your friends with you or your family? And so you get to celebrate, you get to say hello, and sometimes you play games and sing. So that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to start out. And here's a little yellow kid. Remember him? And he's got he's got little bird puppets on his feet. Because we're talking about birds. We're going to play a guessing game about birds. And this kind of better. Do you know what kind of bird this came from? Peacock. A peacock. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. It kind of looks like an eye. Yes, it does. This is called the eye of the peacock. And I found this on the ground one day. And a peacock has oh, his whole tail. It has all these in it. So after the story, you can come up and look at this. Look at this now, one of the presents the library got for their birthday was a, a video camera. I'm going to turn that off right now. Don't get to with me. Now, remember how old did I tell you the library was today? Yes. 30 years old. 30 years old. 30 years old. So, I didn't want to bring 30 candles. My gosh, that's a lot. So, I brought a three. See, it's a three, right? And a zero. And I'm very careful with the matches. And that says 30, doesn't it? So, that's our birthday cake. Are you ready to sing? Yes, Let's get started. Happy birthday to you. Close your eyes and make a wish for the library and yourself. Are your wishes all made? Okay. All right. If you all blow very gently, let's see if we can blow out the library's birthday candles. Just sit still, don't move. Next week, the day before Thanksgiving, Tamaya Asergia, the Japanese uh, young woman who's an intern in the city, will be sharing stories, Japanese children's stories. And uh, later on today, at 3 o'clock, is the construction update meeting. If you'd like to come back and see the model of the new library and all the plans and see the wonderful things that we're going to have in the children's area as well as everyone else, you're welcome to do that. So. I just spent all night baking this library cake. I'll pass it around. This one. What do you say? Thank you. You're welcome. I have more. There's another one. Thank you. 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 Who doesn't 
down, Dylan. Thank you. All right, Wesley, you don't miss anything. Come on, Wes. Wesley, come on. He's coming here. No, one is off. One is off. Has everyone had one? Has everyone had a piece of cake? Oh, wasn't that delicious? Now, after the story hour, you're welcome to go out and, of course, take some books home. And all these are ready to be checked out, and I certainly thank you for coming today. Thank you. Teachers, you're welcome to come up and have some birthday cake. Polly, Polly, come here. No, no more cookie because it's all. All right. I used a pickup truck. And I don't know whether I don't know whether that's me. I can't tell. Look. Oh, right. Wait a minute. What is it? Does it tell us? Wait a minute. Oh, I hope they put the name someplace. I know that. Moving day. There they must be. Right, right. Because okay. I helped with that. And that's why it, wait a minute. Betty Minch in a pickup. Yeah, that's what it says here. Betty in a pickup. <laughs> there I was in a pickup. <laughs> right. Blessed, oh, I love it. Uh, because that's what I was remembering so very much. Uh, that says here. December yeah. 1965. Right, in December of 65. And I remember the pickup and I thought, we were all like horses. You know, we all we did was lift books and, and do all this. But I can't remember when the, who the librarian was at that point. It was a volunteer, of course. Mm -hmm. But maybe, maybe wait a minute. The, uh, we, we were the. Wait a minute now. Packing and unpacking were done by. Well, I don't see my name in there, but boy, I sure packed and unpacked in that thing. It doesn't say there for the library. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, anyway. Right. It does, does Elizabeth Coles. Oh, no. It's David. No. Right. I can't remember either. All right. Shall we start to chatter? Do you want us to talk? <laughs> I think we have been. If it's on now. Yes, we, we were, uh, th this was what I was remembering when Dee had asked me what it was all, you know, how many years I had been here and all that. And I have to tell you how old it's been. When Al and I came here with our children to the island, uh, it was 1964, and then I started going up to the library, which was then just the closet in the community building. Yep. You yep. Well, you've heard I don't that. Remember, you've heard that. You've heard that. You don't remember, but, right. And it was only open just, uh, I think, probably four hours a week, maybe two hours on one day and two hours on another. And it, it was, uh, we just had a little table and, and worked off of that. And then, they, of course, thank heaven, came up with the idea of, of renting this building up in the little shopping center. And the, and the thing that I got remembering was that, with that was that we had just moved out of that after two years when that nasty... Uh, not a hurricane, but um, tropical. The tro yes, uh, a wind. Actually, we saw it coming up the, uh, the the waterway. It was more like a water spout, and it was so strong, and it took that little shopping center and put it up into the trees. Oh my God! Totally gone. Totally gone. Where was this? It, and this was up where um, Jerry's supermarket is now. Oh, no wonder it's not. Yes, there were three little buildings. And in, in fact, mentioning island names, Marty and Mary Holtz used to have a restaurant in there. And, and their children helped them. All our kids helped us in those days. And, and their children helped them there. And it was the little restaurant. And then we rented the next space for the library. And there were just a couple other, and I don't remember what the other little stores were along there, but it was maybe only four little stores, all of which either ended up in the trees or in the bench. So that was. I wonder if there are any pictures of that. There probably will be pictures of that somewhere. I haven't yeah, got any myself. Right. right. And then, thank heaven, we had already moved up because. My, my memory went back to uh, the, the board meetings that we used to have in that building when Jim Pickens first suggested that we would rent uh, up in a new building that they were building up where, um, let me see, it's been sold of course so many times now, but it's on the way to Bailey's and it was the new one, the one in 67, uh, it, it, near, near the Black Pearl. It was that building up there.
and Jim Pickens had one side of it for his real estate, and then we rented the other side for the library. Yeah. And I think if, if we go through the notes sometime, we may find it. I think it was sixty dollars a month. <gasps> and oh. I can remember going home saying, "How will we ever be able to afford sixty dollars a month?" <laughs> and it was so wonderful. And so we we had that building for quite a while, and then, of course, totally outgrew it. And people with good heads and common sense then started planning for our library, which is here. So I've been volu volunteering for the library since 1965. Yeah. Few years. Few years, <laughs> yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And my gray hair is showing. <laughs> okay. uh, well, and in fact, when we were talking about being the oldest volunteer, when we had... And, and as far as yours, as far as sharing goes. Yes, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But when we were in the community building, all I can remember way back all those years ago, in fact, it's almost, the, let's see, 27 years ago. Yes, 27 years ago. We, we had a little closet, and I can just remember seeing the orange crates on the floor for the, for the stacks. And that was our stacks that we had to pile our books on, and that was all that we had. And then when we moved to the uh, newer library, the one that I said was blown away, I can remember uh, a dear man by the name of Buell Franklin, and the library will always be grateful to Buell and his wife. She became a librarian. She was not a trained one, but she had been training in other things. Rhoda was a librarian for a no quite a few years. Rhoda who? Rhoda Franklin. Oh. And she was Buell's wife, and Buell Franklin always loved working with his hands, and he built many a stack for the library, all volunteer. I mean, everything in those days had to be because we didn't have any money. Smoky Bear Clubbers, I don't know what year, 1966. Missy would, would have still been in the, oh, there's Mark. Oh, bless his heart. That, that was the forerunners to the uh, yes. sentimental uh, yes, that, kids. Library yes. kids, library but, kids. How sentimental to see Mark's picture and he'll be dead 13 years. It doesn't seem possible to me. I don't see uh, Missy's problem. Yes, there's Missy. Here's Missy. And it's such fun. Uh, back in those days, we used to have to have everyone sign their name on the library card. You would just have the little stamp and we'd stamp it. Remember? Oh, we Did still you see them. Yes, I mean, you still see them. Books up. Exactly. Yes, you do. And, and the children had to sign their names on it. And I go back now and I find all, that some of Missy's, they were always horse books. And now she has her own horses out in the country, so it's carried over all those years. But the, it was wonderful to have the children come to the library. Because back in those days, uh, in the early, in 60, when we came to the island in 64, there were only 45 children at the elementary school. And, and they didn't even have books for the children. So it was... Really, what we did, we bought our own books or read to our children because we didn't have enough until the library started getting more children's books in. And now, I can look back and look at our children's library and I am so proud of it. It's just, to me, the, the most wonderful part of our library that we have, the Children's Center, come in here with their children and be able to take out books for them that my own little ones did not have the advantage of all those years ago. But I, as I said, we, they only had three rooms the school was only then about a year old, and there were two classes in each room, so that actually you did. Yes. Well, uh, the three, the ten years I've been volunteering, when we started, there was the children's center. Yes. 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 Now started by one of my daughter-in-laws. Oh, <laughs> Junie Minch. Yes. <laughs> there are three children's centers. Yes. And they're waiting. Isn't it so wonderful? you can see how the population has uh, yes. changed. Oh, changed so because when we first came here, there. There were so few children, yeah. and uh, yes. well, on our on our block now we're surrounded by by little ones. I know. Just, I can't believe it. The, the, <laughs> the number in the school it's wonderful. But I didn't know we had a uh, library kids. Yes, yes, isn't that wonderful? There you are. Oh, there I am, Ray. Oh, I love it. And that's 1967. Well, I can't lie about my age. I can, <laughs> it's all right down there in, in order to raise my. Uh, yes, well, a as we were speaking of not having any money in the early years, then the craft show, and you remember that, Yes. Uh, started to raise the money for the library uh, so that we could have some books and have a building and all that, and wh we worked, ver that was a, a really excellent craft show and participated, as you were know, by so many of the islanders. Yes. 
and I think what happened was we ran out of gas on it as yes. far as organizing. It was such a big chore. Yes. And the Lions took it over. Yes. But they still wanted uh, the book sale. Right. And the last year we participated, Barb Toomey and I made how many trips with our van loading books. Oh, I remember that. them over there yes. so we couldn't move. Yes. And we had that whole front of the community mm -hmm, center. Mm -hmm. with All tables. But sale yeah. books. Yes. And uh, we didn't sell that many because of poor publicity. Oh. But it was that year that we decided we weren't going to do that anymore. And that's when we have uh, established the permanent book sale room here. Yes, which is and wonderful. And we make more money yes. doing that than we get hauling all those books. Right, yeah, right. right. That was it, it, because it, uh, one little sideline about that is that when all of us move to the island, we bring our books with us that we think are so precious, and yet when we get here, we don't have space for it. And then they give them to the library. And then we, really, really. And we did need them more. Yes. Yes. You, know, Mark, you go back through the old books, there, right. there's always some neat's name in it. Exactly. You know, it's fun to see the old yeah. books, and, and right. it did help the library a bit. And I think one of the fine things about this library is that this building was built by volunteers. Mm -hmm. the, the money was, was raised and contributed by the people of the island, and this whole building mm -hmm. then was paid for. Yeah, no tax money. No, which is commendable, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, Ruth Clark oh. and... Uh, Edie. Yeah, Elise and Elise Fuller. Of they course. Uh, Edie and Ruth just yeah. retired this year. Oh, and no. Oh, right. Yes. Many, many years. And, uh, yes. Just Edie retired. has been a, just the heart and soul of that room, yeah, right. accessioning books the way she had right. for so many she years. Was for oh, years. yes. So yes, and Ruth was too. And of course, Ruth with her children's hey, program yes. has always been so active. Yeah, big change. But it, it, it's, it makes me sentimental when I go back to think how many people have been volunteers through the years and stayed with the program. It's, it's just great. And to think that the library has improved every year because now we have paid librarians who teach us and help us, right. and it makes it more professional, right? Which is very good, right? I'm, I'm so happy that we are going to have the larger library. I think primarily, and this is speaking to your uh, UD that, that uh, I think is so important that we will have a children's room. So many grandmothers want to come and read to their children here in the library, and we've had such a small space for them, and now with the new library, we'll have it, and it makes me very happy. I'm delighted. It's wonderful. Getting back to the volunteers, I think it's interesting that when uh, uh, Pat Allen came to Sanibel from Carmel, Indiana. She had, uh, I think, a staff of over 40 people and about uh, six volunteers. And when she came here, it was just her this is the opposite. I mean, at that yes. time, there were three yes. staff people and about 46 right. volunteers. So that's, that's quite a switch. It's nice. We wouldn't be able to operate it without the volunteers. Mm -hmm. That's right. Makes me happy. All right. much a church goer when you were working here at the library. No. <laughs> oh, this was our church. <laughs> yes, every Sunday morning. Religiously, religiously, we came and did our janitorial and book selection chores. Okay, and what kind of maintenance work went on? What? Well, we had a janitor of sorts, and then we had Arthur. <laughs> Was that from dusting the ceiling? Yes, we bought a, a, a 
can of spray because the uh, registers were uh, getting pretty dirty and uh, we didn't have the money to do the ceilings over. So mm -hmm. We had the bright idea that if we sprayed around it, it would be fine. So uh, they got on a little ladder and we were spraying and it was fine. And then suddenly we realized that the whole counter <laughs> His hair, which was very black at that time, and my eyelashes were all white, and we were beginning to sneeze. And it was every time we tried to clean it up or take a dust cloth, it just smeared it more. And the rug, it was awful. <laughs> well, you had trouble with rugs, didn't you? Uh, oh, yes. Wait, did you get a new rug one time? Well, when we first moved in, everything was all spick and span, and we were so proud of everything. And uh, they uh, told us, how is the bee told us that we must never serve anything to eat in the library. So our little children's program came along, and uh, of you had to give them a little punch or something. So the first time we had a little party, we put it out all inside the door. Well, pretty soon we had more bees and, <laughs> and animals in the punch than we did <laughs> oranges. <laughs> and so we decided that that couldn't happen again. So the next time we got special permission to set up a table about where Pat's desk is, because that was not close. Is it? And we had the punch bowl, and, and we had this little story hour, and it wasn't the little children who were at the story hours, but their younger siblings <laughs> who sat under the table and the parents gave them little paper cups and here we go, groups. <laughs> and pretty soon the whole staff was down on hands and knees with claws scrubbing the snoop rug. So we didn't do that again. No more food. No more food. Well, maybe that's where the rule started, even now that the food and drink oh, is not yes. allowed in the library. It's, it's an absolute taboo. <laughs> so today we're going to break the rules a little bit to yes. celebrate this auspicious occasion. Well, it's a wonderful occasion, and we uh, have loved this building so much, and we realize, of course, it's getting a little too crowded, and so we look forward to it. New one, and I think this will be well used. Now, did you volunteer? It's still going to be just the size. Uh, well, we had one program for about snakes. We were pretty desperate for subjects. And uh, we asked uh, one of the very nice young boys up at Man Valley, up at the conservation to who could come and give us a talk on snakes. Well, it's so happened that he was a snake collector, so he came well out with a great big. Uh, a pillowcase over his shoulder with all these live snakes that were mm -hmm. wiggling around. And so we had children, of course, were fascinated, but the mothers were absolutely spastic. <laughs> and for some of the mothers were standing outside while the program was going on because they couldn't stand seeing these snakes. And the children finally got so that they were wrapping them around their neck. <laughs> Owls going up and down, and it was really a very funny thing and a successful program because the children loved it. Were there quite a few snakes on the island at that time? Oh, yes, there were always a lot of snakes, but most of them. The young man just collected them and he had them all in perfect control. But of course, it is a little startling when you see someone with a pillowcase that's wriggling all around come in and wonder where he's going to land. Now, Ruth, you did the children's programs, all of the children's programming, is that right? Well, there was a very nice lady, Elise Fuller, who preceded me. Mm -hmm. And she happened to be uh, in Boston and chairman, I mean, owner, co-owner with her husband of the famous mm -hmm. old corner bookstore, right, that looked out on the common in Boston. And my dear husband, Arthur, who worked for Hope Mifflin, was on the Tupac Street, which was just above the most famous buildings in Boston. And they never really knew each other because one was a publishing firm and the other. We came down here, and here was Elise. And so she immediately demanded that I come have a drink with her, and, and we talked. And 
suddenly I found out that I had a lot of the material of the children's. Mm -hmm. And she was just quietly retiring, and I, <laughs> I woke up one day and found I was it. So <laughs> and that was all there was to it. There was no formal ceremony. <laughs> you just uh, uh, gradually evolved into the yes. And of course, who was the young boy? He used to be here all the time. Sat at the first desk. Yes. Helene Edmund? No, no, young. Had three little boys. And uh, she worked a long time. And then was our caretaker, two mm -hmm. children. And if we got eight children for our program, we thought we were doing very well, and we knew them very well. So it was a very modest beginning, because we didn't have any books. If we, I think the appropriation that they used to give me for children's books for the whole year was something like $150. So <laughs> we didn't buy a great many yeah. books. But they weren't as expensive then as they were. No. And, and people gave us so everything worked out pretty well. Was it, this was wonderful. We thought this was a mansion for the children. Oh, yeah. for sure. Now, you did some kind of program with a bear one time, is that right? No. 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 Oh, okay. And what did you what did you say? Smokey the bear for fire prevention oh, okay. that came. And I think it was sort of a county thing rather than a program that we planned. Because the children liked his costume pretty well, except for the young ones were scared. It, uh, it was it was a program. That's about all I can say about that. Well, how long did you volunteer? You were a volunteer before the library moved. Into this building? Oh, so yes. Betty Zajac and I had Saturday mornings in a little store that's no longer in existence. And uh, we, uh, from 9 to 12, and, uh, every Saturday at 12, a young gal, woman, came in who lived at the trailer park. She's not there anymore. And she always had one book. And it was the Peter Shems Christ Child. Mm -hmm. And she loved that book, so she couldn't bear to bring it back. So she had every excuse known to library <laughs> excuses about not bringing that. She had let somebody else take it. She misplaced it. She forgot to bring it. <laughs> and so we really had a wild time with this book and we laughed at it after she left because we tried to be very stern and say you must bring it back. But she came in knowing that we closed at 12 on Saturdays at one minute of 12. Betty say Jack and I would say, well, she comes. <laughs> I see someone, Edie Levy's here. Would you like to talk with Edie a while? Well, no. And that was back when we were had a home, just about a large closet in the community center. That was even before Bob left. Bob came? Yeah. Oh, sure. I, 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 I got Bob in the first in the library. This is <laughs> oh, and tell about that. I talked him into it. But tell about that, Edie. That's good. Well, uh, I don't remember exactly what year it was. I think you find that out by looking in the book. But, uh, Bob and, and Phoebe Haney were good friends of my husband's and mine. My husband was Leon Levy, and he was the, uh, well, he had a little shop down at the Seahorse, and he had a little gallery that was a retired architect. He was the, uh, an artist, and he was very, he started the Sun of Captiva Art League, as a matter of fact, and he was its first president. And he and I were good friends of Phoebe and Bob Haynes. And we we uh, actually talked him into coming into the library. And then he, then he gradually got interested and became a Then he stayed for 20, what, 20 years or something? Like yes. That? A long time. And, he, and I was on the board as corresponding secretary for many years. That was my job. I guess I retired about five years ago. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know where Pat Mary was. Mary Martin? Yeah. She was president of the library. Uh, yeah. 
she was. Well, because was there any particular one? I don't know. But I guess what these suggest. No, we, we moved to that little place that burned down just beyond the congregational church. I remember that. We were there for a while. And nobody else. I, I did all the work as far as putting the books on the shelf. And a decibel number and, and checked on it. And I gave them to somebody to type because I never typed. They did the cards and the pockets and stuff. Uh, initially, most of the books were donated books, weren't they? Almost all. Yeah. Were donated books, yes. Well, you know, the library had several locations. And, and finally, when we got here, I guess we thought that. Well, this was our fourth. Yeah, this, this was the ultimate location. By golly, we could get here and then we added on to it twice, I guess. That's right. And then here now we're going to have, if, if you've seen the picture, oh, and the yes, model of I came oh, this, over for our meeting this about new, a month ago. This new library is yes. just going to be absolutely really is a lovely place. It, it, it will be one of the most imposing buildings I've seen. Maybe imposing is not the right word, but. I can show you where they, they oh, are. Those are good words. <laughs> But Why not? It will be automated. And, uh, well, and I, I said to Pat after that meeting that is she going to have computers? And she said, no, but they're going to be set up. And the money for the computers will come back. You watch computers are coming just, just like this. <laughs> well, I think it should be. Yeah. But we have a new library at Summer Place Island and up in Henderson, which is in North Carolina. And they just opened their library. It's great. You go to the desk and you say, is this book in? And they press a couple of buttons and tell you. And then when you check it out, it's like buying groceries. You don't have to look at the catalog card. <laughs> and it's just like buying groceries when you check it out. That's right. That's right. That's right. The, the wonderful scattered. thing about it here is, is this sort of a marriage, I guess, that we're having between the city and, and the library in the I sense that, that the city is making the land available. Now what are they going to do with this land? Have you all decided? I think yeah, they haven't decided yet. There's a lot of ideas. Uh, a lot of people would like to use it. So I, I guess that's... The city isn't going to sell it. I, I, that, that's one possibility, of course. Uh, I don't think any, anytime soon. We talked about uh, maybe putting a police department over here maybe making the senior center out of a number of different kinds of things, but I don't think any, any decision has been made there. It'll be a one that the whole time. Is Jerry Mitch is one there. You know, she is. Mitch. Betty. Oh, Betty. Betty. Yes. She, Betty has been here a long time. Betty came, uh, maybe not quite as long as I am. But, but, but a long time. But quite a long time. And Betty's Ajax. And Betty's Ajax, too, you're right. Mm -hmm. 30 years from now. I came in 1962. Uh, we, we moved to the island in the February 62. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, guess, I guess in the fall, 62 is when I came. It's 30 years. Are those flowers from your garden, Betty? From my neighbors, but don't tell her she's out of town. I don't want her to know. <laughs> Look for it. So I had a nice chance to get that. Oh, dear. He did a very nice story. I'm sure. And I put it out for to send it to Bill or buy another paper. Harriet Howell, former librarian. Hi, Harriet. Yes, uh-huh. Okay. Well, this is a very special hibiscus plant that he gave to you. I start there. All right. 
someone, I don't know, because that was, if I was eight years old, that would have been 1929, and do you know that somebody spiked the punch? Oh, really? And, of course, there weren't too many of us. We had just joined. They took you in. <laughs> I didn't like the, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the truth, I didn't like the taste, so I only drank that one little cup. But it was a very serious meeting because the stock market had just gone to pieces, and the YWCA was brand new, and they weren't going to have any money. And I giggled, and I giggled all through it. Eight, eight, eight. Yeah. There you go. Eight inches. Um, she had been in the office. Yeah. They were in the office that we Is there parking inside? 
there will be parking under the building, uh, some for handicap, and there will be some few left. Uh, Pat and I have not decided who gets the premium <laughs> I've decided. He has <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good. Will there be bicycle racks? Yes, there will be bicycle racks. This is what the library is looking like. This is City Hall. This is Dunlop Road here. here. This is the layout of the ground floor. Ground floor. This is where you drive in. You turn around outside the building, come back out, and like that. Handicap parking in here. These are uh, storage rooms or mechanical rooms and a stairs up to the uh, library operating area. Is that where the, the uh, meeting room is to be also down on that level? Yes. This is a meeting room for library purposes and there's restrooms here and uh, it's used to a degree for community meetings, for evening work. And in such case, the front here will be locked off. They will not be able to get to the stairs or the elevator. So they have only this room, and they can get in there from the outside. That one gentleman who shall remain nameless in this room that we can't open the library each morning unless he comes to read the paper. And it finally dawned on me why he comes so early, because that's the only time that he can be assured of finding a chair. <laughs> one morning he didn't come, and I didn't even know we were going to be able to open the library or not that day. But anyway, uh, this is where you'll come into the library. Uh, this will be the circulation area. We will have one desk instead of the two that we now have, so that you'll see all of the wonderful, friendly volunteer faces when you come in the door. And from this area, the central area, we want to be able uh, to have it arranged so that you can see immediately <coughs> the area that you want to go to. Uh, if you want to take the children uh, to the children's area, you can just come right over here. If you want to go to the audiovisual room to pick up an audio tape or a video tape, then you can go right here. If you want to go to the adult section, then you can just walk down here and uh, we'll have the large print books, the fiction and nonfiction in this area. Magazines will be all along this front wall with the windows over them. There will be seating about uh, comfortable soft chairs as well as tables and chairs in this area and around in here. This area all around the perimeter of the building. We hope will be quiet so that you will have a, a place to read quietly or to study quietly or to work quietly. And this will be the reference area here so that uh, the person that needs information uh, will be able to stop here, use the card catalog, and we do plan to have the card catalog, so breathe a sigh of relief if you're one of those people that are frightened <laughs> to death of computers. <laughs> but, uh, and that's a point that I'm sure a lot of people, and a lot of people have asked me about. Would you all like to come in and sit down? Please, uh, help yourself. We have to get it's an automated system for interlibrary loan. Uh, we have a lot of writers on the island, and we have people that need more materials than we have available here because we are a leisure uh, reading library. We're not a research library. So when a person is doing serious research, then we have to go to another library to get that material. But that's one advantage of having a library in your local neighborhood. Interlibrary loan is always available, and we can get books from anywhere in the world, actually. And we frequently get information from other libraries in the United States. So anyway, that's an aside. Uh, in this area right here, for the first time, we're going to have an archives area. This will be a combination archives and conference room. So if you have a small uh, group, sometimes uh, students need uh, to work and uh, have group work or they have a group project, they have, this is an area where they can go and work. At other times, there may be someone that's uh, particularly interested in Sanibel history. This is where we hope to have uh, scrapbooks, uh, microfilmed island newspapers uh, and if you are the secretary or the president of an organization and you have a uh, presidential or a place to safely house and make available to the public the print materials and the photographs that will be more difficult for the, the museum to house. So that's what will be in this area. Uh, this is uh, my office, this is the bookkeeping and the board office, a 
storage room, and this is the technical services area here. This is where all of the books are uh, come in to be processed, to be cataloged, assigned subject headings, uh, to get covers on the back of them. And by being in this central area, they can be easily shipped into the children's area or to the adult area. So this, uh, when you see us back in the back sitting on top of each other <laughs> or, or elbowing each other, you know how happy we're going to be to have a little more space to work. Then uh, this is a staff room, and this is uh, also a room that uh, we're looking forward to, to have an, a place to uh, visual room. This is going to be a larger room than we have now, and uh, one of the things that we plan to add is some type of music on cassettes. And if you remember the survey that we did earlier this year, we uh, got back a lot of good answers about the kind of music that people prefer and the formats, so we're looking at that very carefully. And we, we take those surveys uh, very seriously because when we ask your opinion, we really want to know what you think and what uh, you want in the library because it is your library. It's our library. And it's not mine and it's not the board's. It, it belongs to all of us. And I'm sure that you're just as uh, happy to have it available here on the island as I am. Uh, one of the, uh, another new thing that we're going to have in the audiovisual room is a place where you could uh, actually sit and preview a video or preview uh, a recording. Uh, this will be with the use of headphones so that you won't disturb other people. But sometimes if you're going on a trip and you want to take uh, an audio tape with you, Dee can't wait until we get the children's area finished because she's actually going to have a, a place where she can work on her puppets and uh, she doesn't have to take her whole bedroom at home and, and use it for a, a work area. She's going to have a place here at the library that she can do part of that work with. Then uh, in this area right here, this rounded area mirrors the entrance and also the other end of the library. And this is going to be a storytelling area. It will have uh, two narrow steps for the little children to play on. You know how they like to practice their stair climbing at that age. So with carpet on the floor, I think it's going to be a wonderful area for them. And it will also give a raised area when Dee tells the story or when the library kids uh, uh, put on their puppet plays they'll be able to be a little bit higher and the children can sit on the floor and, and see the story or hear the story and see the storyteller. So uh, I think that's going to be a wonderful area. We're also going to have uh, in the children's area different size tables from the, the one, we're going to have one that we're, well, I say we're going to, I'm really positive about this. <laughs> we're planning right now to have a table up you know, on this raised area for the little children that will be low enough where they don't even have to have chairs to it. And then uh, over in this area there will be a preschool area where the, there will be small tables and small chairs and then uh, the next size table and chair for the, the next <coughs> age child. So I think it's just going to be wonderful all the way around. I'm just so anxious to see it all pulled together. And we're working with uh, <coughs> different consultants, how much you plan and how perfect you think it is, there's always something that you wish you had done differently. And I'm sure that this is going to be the same way. So, but we're, we're doing our best and we're, we're trying as hard as we can to, to make it an excellent facility. Let's do that. Thank you. Thank you. So, I think one of us done right. Today we've had the opportunity to visit with longtime volunteers, 25, 30 years of service, as they shared stories and memories of the library. We saw Betty Minch talking with former board president Marilyn Lawrenson, Ruth Clark talking with library director Patricia J. Allen, and Edie Levy in conversation with former Sanibel mayor and library board member Mike Miracle. Hostesses Betty Zajac and Betty Lou Barbieri showed us the beautiful and appetizing refreshments table that they prepare for the update construction meeting. Our director, Pat Allen, and Wendell Lapp, head of the construction committee, conducted the meeting. We saw the floor plans and a model of the new library. Happy 30th birthday, Sanibel Public Library. Model of the new library. Happy 30th birthday, Sanibel Public Library.